Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you're very welcome. If you are a new subscriber, I encourage you to make use of the tools that are here at the Master's Voice Prophecy blog so that you can be able to move through the material at a pace that will be beneficial to you. I have a dashboard. You can get there by clicking either the avatar, the profile picture for the channel, or you can click the channel name, the Master's Voice Prophecy blog, and that will take you to sort of the dashboard for the channel where you will see home, you will see videos, you will see channels, you will see playlists, you will see various things listed at the top. So you can go through this channel several ways. You can go through all the videos, set the filter from oldest to newest. And that is the most comprehensive way. I'm getting more and more feedback from people that God is touching them in their hearts to listen to all the videos here. Now that's obviously going to be quite an undertaking of work, but it will be well worth your while. By the time you go through all these videos at your own pace, you will have as comprehensive a view as is possible of all the things that the Lord is saying is coming to the nation of America first and then to the rest of the world. So you can do it that way. You can go through all the videos from the oldest to the newest. I personally highly recommend it. And you can also use the playlists. There are playlists where everything is listed by themes. So there's different topics here on the master's voice. The Holy Spirit talks on so many topics, but then there are what I would call major themes. These themes, the Lord has been revisiting these themes since I published this blog in 2019. And it's now 2024, February, 2024. And the Holy Spirit is still coming back to touch on certain themes such as Russia and China such as political changes coming here to the United States in terms of government, how things are done, what the United States is going to look like in the future. There's videos about changes that are coming to U.S. currency, changes that are going to affect the whole world because of a terrible financial crisis that is going to come. There is the supernatural playlist. I think there's two or three supernatural playlists. One of them is dealing with fallen angels and giants, Nephilim, the other one is dealing with um, supernatural, um, unclean hybrid beings called aliens. So I know the aliens are alone in their playlist. And then I think there's also another playlist, but a lot of the videos contained in that can only be found on BitChute, Rumble, and Brighteon because they are part of the 2020 COVID medical prophecies that I had here for, I think about two years. And then because of YouTube's ever-changing policies, I was forced to move them. So I highly recommend that you go through the material. There's also the community page that you will be able to see on the dashboard and on the community page, when I have time, I update prophecies that are developing because very few of these prophecies are just going to drop out of the sky and fulfill themselves. Most of them are slow burn prophecies. And if you have understanding, if you are a student of prophecy, you know that God doesn't have a desire to strike and destroy in one blow. This does not mean that God will not bring justice, that God will not bring judgment, that God will not bring punishment. What it means is that to Christians who have understanding and know the character of God, we understand that the time between a prophecy being given and a prophecy being fulfilled is crucial to those listening to the prophecy. That time that you can see represented by my hands here, that time is going to decide what kind of person you're going to be. So the worst kind of person is the person who hears the prophecy and between the time it is given and the time that it is fulfilled does nothing. We're going to discuss those people today for sure. So you hear the prophecy and then either because you're not listening, because you don't want to listen, because you have an opposing view, because you don't like the message or something like that, you hear a prophecy and then you dismiss it. You hear the prophecy and then you doubt it. You say, it doesn't sound like God to me. So these days, this is how we process the word of God. The word of God has to sound like what we think. We have a standard. It's right here. You read this thing regularly and it will tell you exactly what God sounds like. This book 
is the standard. This is the benchmark for what God sounds like. So God doesn't have to sound like what your grandmother told you, like what your favorite pastor told you, or even what your feelings are telling you. God only has to sound like, please listen, God only has to sound like and match up what's in here. Once we can find what God sounds like in here, then it doesn't really matter if you are even a Christian or not. Things that are going to happen in this world are going to happen to Christians and non-Christians alike. In fact, because of the things that will happen in the world, a lot of people who are not Christian, once they realize that calling out to the empty, nobody's there, nobody's actually answering faiths that they're in, once nobody begins to help those people, those people will rapidly respond to the voice and the message of the Lord Jesus Christ that will be going out throughout the whole earth in times of crisis, in times of bombs, in times of wars, people are still going to be getting saved. And that is going to be a very crucial turning point in history. When bad things are happening on this earth, I can promise and guarantee you because I've seen it in so many prophetic dreams and the Lord had spoken about it to me so many times. When terrible tough things are happening, a lot of people will be coming into the kingdom. And when terrible tough things are happening, a lot of people will be flowing out of the kingdom. That will be those people who be before, when they heard the prophecy up until the time the prophecy was fulfilled, they didn't change anything. They didn't change their mindset. They didn't change their heart posture. That is how they deal with God, how they relate to God, how they relate to the word of God, the house of God. They didn't change the their attitude, they didn't change their faith level. There are people who hear the prophecies and believe it, but continue at the same faith level. They literally do not escalate. So they hear that deluge is coming, economic crash is coming, and they do not understand or factor in that between the time the word is given and the time the word is fulfilled, no matter what faith level you're at, you're going to need more faith than you think. You're absolutely not going to be allowed to stay the same and be able to jump the final hurdle. Even if the prophecy starts here, if it starts down here and you hear it, it's going to end up here on a very stressful and difficult high note. And if you think that you're going to bridge the difference, the gap between down here, which is just hearing about it. Some people can't even hearing, can't handle hearing the things that I talk about. They get palpitations, they get stressed, they get teary, they, they get shredded, and yet you are only listening to the prophecy. When these things start to happen for real, nobody's bridging this gap by staying the way they've, they're staying. If you have not started to get into the word of God, if you have not yet made an investment in your own personal Bible, by now, you've been listening to a few messages, you don't own a Bible, you've come from social media, and you think that how you handle the end times is reading the Bible on your phone or an audio Bible. We're all going to have to learn some difficult lessons. And that's all I'll say. If you're a new person, it is very unlikely that you're going to be comfortable with what you hear here. And so please understand that your comfort level is something that you're going to have to work out. You don't have to be comfortable. Um, those of us who are committed Christians, we know you don't have to be comfortable in Christianity all the time. It is, it is not a picnic all the time. You don't read the Bible and see that the people in there were happy all the time. The people in the Bible got attacked. The people in the Bible dealt with sickness. They dealt with wars. They dealt with the deaths of their children. They dealt with sudden disasters. They also had to constantly deal with being confronted by their own sinfulness and handling God's response to human sinfulness. So this blog is spot on in terms of matching up with scripture and showing you that this doesn't have to match your feelings and this doesn't have to be easy for you to digest, to be a true work of God. The standard is, is what I'm talking about in here, is the Lord expressing himself exactly how he ex expressed himself in times past. And once that thing has been laid, then... We're just going to have to fit ourselves around the reality of where we find ourselves. Um, I'm currently in a series, but the Lord has instructed me to take a slight detour. And this detour will be anything but slight. It's going to be 
Not easy for people to hear, but nevertheless, these are themes that are well-worn. I've covered them a lot of times. The series that I'm in is related to the exposure of things that are extremely important to the end times. But for now, I'm taking a short break from that series to bring two dreams. And by the grace of God, maybe I'll be able to um, handle them both tonight. It will be two separate videos, not two dreams. One is a dream and the other one is a message from the Lord that came on February the 24th, which was yesterday. So before that, the dream from February the 23rd, 2024, and it's simply called a dream of the new America, the dream of the new America. And so here's what happened. Um, I've been having, I've been having the same dream come back but the frustrating thing is that when there's a lot going on, it's a busy day or I'm getting to bed too late. What happens is that the Holy Spirit will not be able to connect with me, Celestial, to give me the dream. And so there's panels. I guess people who work with stories, people who work with the movies, you'll understand. We all know what a panel is, actually. We see it in the movies all the time. It's the different scenes. So I've been seeing a panel of me just walking. I'm just walking, walking, walking. But every time I wake up, instantly I wake up, the dream is gone. The dream is gone. And so uh, on the 23rd of February, the dream came back and it was very clear. And when I woke up, the Lord was talking to me about this dream. So the dream is going to contain the dream itself, as well as all the elements that the Lord was showing me and explaining to me. And the bottom line is before I start, just so you can understand, America is going to change. If you're an American and you live abroad, then God bless you. You've, uh, excuse me, please. You've moved with wisdom. Maybe you left this place in the eighties or you left this place in the seventies and it was viable for you at that time. There are quite a few people who have been moving in the last few years. And that is because many people are waking up and they can read the writing on the wall. And so I've always said in the old prophecies that the reason that you can't be upset, for instance, if you are in an income bracket where you can't move is because this is part of life. I explained this thing since 2019 already. And I was saying that the Lord said, for instance, that shortages will come, that we're going to have problems with access to medical care and things like that. And what is a fact of life? A fact of life is that when you are financially constrained, you can do less. And we all learned that lesson in COVID. The people who had more money bought more stuff and the people who had less money had less stuff. And the people who had more savings are not getting evicted now in the years after COVID. The people who had more money just kept paying their rent and the people who didn't got fooled by the stimulus check. They stopped paying their rent. They thought that daddy Biden was going to carry them forever. And then he did a looky-loo, a switcheroo, and he didn't. And then that's why housing court is constantly stuffed. That's the most backlogged court of any court in the nation. Why? Because there's thousands and tens of thousands of people getting evicted off of that 2020 stuff. Finances play a role. This is life. This is actually how prophecy unfolds. Prophecy is not going to unfold in a vacuum. It's not going to unfold as a mystery. It is going to take place along sometimes very obvious tracks, but that doesn't mean it's not prophecy. The whole point of it is being told about it before it happens. Why? So that whether you have more money or less money, whether you have a disability or not, you can exploit the gap between hearing about it and the day it comes. If you are dealing with financial constraints, you are dealing with socioeconomic problems, you're dealing with health challenges, the gap is God's mercy. People come here all the time and harass or attempt to harass me. Your prophecies are not loving. God loves you enough to warn you about what is coming. If that's not love, if love is not seeing a pothole or in this case, a, a plunging cliff edge in the front and telling you cliff edge, then I don't know what love is. Love warns you. Love will tell you that the protective rails are going to get ripped off. Love will tell you there's a harsh impact up ahead. Strap on and put on your seatbelt. Don't mind your wife who doesn't listen and tells you that the channel is doom and gloom. Don't mind your brother who dismisses it 
or don't mind your mother who listens a little bit, but then she lets her fear get the better of her. And then she says, no, I don't think this is God. It doesn't sound like God. It doesn't matter in the end, whether we think it sounds like God or not. The Lord is talking to this country and all the nations are watching exactly like they will be watching at our final destruction in Revelation 18. The nations are the witness. They are all tuned in here. All the continents, except perhaps Antarctica, are watching. And the reason the viewership is growing is not because of bedside manner. The viewership is growing because the whole earth, true Christians, even non-Christians, are hungry to know what comes next. This is why people go to psychics. This is why people do their horoscope. This is why people read tarot cards. This is why people are in witchcraft. Humanity has a hole in them that wants to know the future. Prophecy is the only clean vehicle by which God will tell you the future. The only thing is that this is not a future that you can shift or change. Not in this case, not for America. We have a brand new face coming. And the gap is the hope. The gap is the love. The gap is the mercy. And if you don't want it, then there's literally nothing left for you but to stay the same until fulfillment comes. And then you will be destroyed because what's waiting after fulfillment is certain destruction. That's where the cliff falls away. So if you didn't strap on a parachute before you got to this one, then there's nothing more to say. I dreamt of the new military America that is coming Something had happened in this country. So I said that I'd been sleeping and the dream was not coming to me, but I finally dreamt. February the 23rd, 2024, I dreamt of the new military America. It was a heavily militarized America, okay? We don't see the military in this country. We do not see them. We watch them when they're performing shock and awe on other countries, when they're uh, at war with other countries outside. That's when all the news channels are making sure that we can see the three missile formation. We can sh see the ships at sea. This thing is viewed from a distance. It is viewed through a viewfinder. Okay. So it's only, it is watch only for us, but America had changed. Something had happened in this country and it was not a positive something. It was a negative something and it was a hard impact something. God has been talking to me about hard impact for a long time, even before COVID. A hard impact is when something that is already planned, in the case of America, it's already planned. Please don't think that it's organic. Please don't think, oh, it's going to, no. It's already planned. Hard impact is when they plan something and they literally are going to take the vehicle and smash it into the wall, into the wall at 200 miles per hour, on a day that you don't expect, and you're not going to be wearing a seatbelt unless the Holy Spirit has mercy and warns you. 9-11 was the perfect example of uh, a hard impact. A 9-11 is the kind of thing that America does when they need to reset the country and they need to bypass all of us talking, all of us saying, no, you can't do that. And this amendment and that amendment, and remember the amendments, when they want to bypass talk, when they want to bypass um, pushback, when they want to bypass getting impeached and voted out, what happens is that a hard impact is the best way. It's a hard reset. You wipe the computer, you wipe the laptop, you wipe the tablet, and then you start over. And because it's such a shell shocking experience, the people do not respond in any kind of useful way. And that is what happened to Americans when whatever this thing happened, something went wrong. There was a shift in the country and whatever that hard impact was, it shifted all of us immediately into a new lifestyle. I'm not saying that people lost their jobs or I'm not saying that buildings fell or anything like that. Whatever had happened necessitated um, a militarized America. I will give the prophecies at the end as the Lord is bringing them to my mind now. Whatever had happened, it necessitated a militarized America. A militarized America means that you're not going to get out of your house and just walk to the end of the street or walk all the way several blocks to the train station and only see people walking their dog and people getting the paper and people doing what they're do doing. You're going to see cops everywhere. You're going to see soldiers everywhere, exactly as it was in COVID, except worse. And so something had happened. 
It shifted us suddenly into a new lifestyle. And that new lifestyle, I'm telling you, there were tanks on the street. So just the way it looks in Yemen, I guess, the way it must have looked in Afghanistan, the way it looked in Iraq with American presence everywhere, heavy on the street. It was like that. There were tanks on the streets and guns, armored vehicles, armed military, and these things were suddenly a part of everyday life. Everywhere in America had experienced the same sudden change. So this is going to be a national thing, not like 9-11. 9-11 was a New York thing that had far-reaching implications throughout the country, Patriot Act and all that as a result. Search and seizure, taking off your shoes at the airport, um, being searched, you know, and not needing a search warrant, that kind of thing. National security hyped up. All of that is the fruit of the evil tree of 9-11. And please note, because I covered it in the prophecy that is called the Patriot Act, that tree has never stopped bearing fruit. And the Lord says that the tree that bore the Patriot Act will never stop bearing fruit until the old Patriot Act is replaced with a new one that is going to be even more draconian, even more far reaching, even more putting its hands into your wallet and walking into your house without a search warrant. It's going to be much worse than that. And so that was what that prophecy was about. But all these things, guns and tanks, if you can imagine tanks in, in the U.S. streets, it's going to be a part of everyday life. And the same sudden change had happened everywhere. It was not a localized change. The same change had happened everywhere, whatever that event was. The same response happened across the country. Every part of the United States shifted and all of a sudden, military presence was visible on our streets on a regular basis. So just a moment, please. So the three-part prophecies that talk about, they're called in quick succession, America in turmoil. In quick succession, America in turmoil. And that's part one, part two, and part three. Part three talks about the deep state and Donald Trump. But part two and part one was talking about a time when America will become highly destabilized because of actions that the government will be taking, taking to usher us into a new life where the military will be a visible part of everyday life. Right now, there's no stable country that has military on the street. It's, it's not a sign of development to be a country that has guns on the street. In fact, every time we see guns on the street, we know that stability and political power is not operating well in that country. Whenever you wake up and you see a coup, you always see the men outside with guns on the street. And that's not a sign that the arms of government are working well. That's a sign of severe instability, severe unrest. Something is wrong in that country. And the proof of that is that you need men with guns on the street to give some kind of order. It's never supposed to be like that. And so soldiers were everywhere and then they were being backed up by police presence. They were being backed up by police presence, but the soldiers far outnumbered the police. So whatever this was, this response was very well planned. Because one of the things that I saw when the Lord was speaking to me tonight is when he was telling me about the tanks is that I saw, you could say it's a barn, but it's not necessarily a barn. Let's just say it's barn shaped and it's not painted red like the stereotypical barn. It's, I want to call it a silo, but let's just say something brown and made of wood and then it has a ramp very big. And then I just saw the tanks coming out of it like that, coming out of it like that. And then they would come out and then some of them would go right. And then some of them would go left and then they would drive until they get to the highway. And then they began to deploy along the highways. Whatever it is that is going to happen in this country, we need to understand that the tanks will be in position already. So I'm not familiar with the way the, the military does things. I don't know if the military sits in one part of the country and then when something happens, they have to drive all the way from there and go to all the different parts or if they have, yeah, they do have bases, but I don't know if they have, for instance, tanks at all the bases. What I know is that 
These tanks are not coming from the military bases. These tanks are in the various locations. I didn't see them so much in rural areas, but definitely in areas that we live in, cities, urban areas. These tanks are already in the urban areas, hiding in what looks like brown barns. Now, it might be simple gray cement buildings, but whenever the Lord is showing me barns, he's simply showing me stored up. This is a place that is stored up. This is a place that has been kept up because normally in barns, we store resources. We store our animals there. We store feed. We store grain. We store uh, harvest. Barns are used to store what we need. But what the U.S. government is doing is that they have locations all across the country where they have put the tanks. And when they do the thing that they're going to do, all of a sudden, the tanks are just going to be rolling out like that. That's how I saw them. They were just coming down this little ramp, one, two, three, four, in a very toy-like formation. That's how God was showing it. Coming out like military toys, and then some going left and some going right. And what they were doing is seeking the fastest way to get on the highway. And then they will just spread out through the suburbs. They will spread out through the ordinary neighborhoods. So that's what I saw. The soldiers were far more than the police presence. And because of their numbers, and because of their demeanor, and also because of the fact that their weapons were very prominent, these men are going to be holding uh, things that we usually only see in the movies. We, we see their weapons in the movies, the kind that they show us anyway, but they're going to be holding it right there in front of your child that you've been protect protecting from violence all your life and things like that. And just the fact that we don't see them every day, the soldiers were definitely predominating on the intimidation factor that was coming across to us in the street. I'm telling you now, you've watched uh, Call of Glory and you've watched Saving Private Ryan and you've watched everything that Hollywood has made and you think that you are a very tough man, but you are not. Because when you are confronted by these men who will not speak to you, who will not answer any questions. If you've never had a USGI standing there and you ask him something and then he does this, the slow turn with the mirrored glasses, the mirrored military sunglasses. If you never had that man turn from whatever he was looking at and turn to look at you like you are the last roach that escaped the raid, then you're going to find out in the future and you're going to feel that small because they're not going to relate with you the way TV has told you. TV has told you that Bucko and Buddy Boy are your friends. They're the cavalcade. They're the cavalry. They're the saviors. They're the boys. But when this government weapons up the boys against us and are told that we are the problem, that we are the, what's the military word? The target. It's no longer Al Jazeera and Al Fazir. It will be us, normal people in our homes, that will be getting all this flack from these people. And because the police are going to so want to support and impress these men, American police are going to be excessively, even more gruff than they are now excessively trigger happy, excessively aggressive, because they're going to think where the soldiers are here and we've got to show them that we're not soft. It's going to be a very dangerous kind of situation. And the reason I'm, I'm making this clear is so that those who have ears to listen will begin to understand that clarity is not meant to induce fear. Obviously, if you're hearing something that you're unused to, yes, you might feel fear. The clarity is actually... God's way of telling you, it's time to put your trust in me because you can't outrun a bullet. And it's time to put your trust in me because you've got great medical coverage, but medical coverage will be difficult to be happy about if somebody puts the, the butt of a gun against your cheek and breaks your jaw because you didn't know when to stop talking or you didn't know not to talk to those people. So soldiers were out, police were supporting them, and the soldiers were wearing some kind of distinctive, very heavy gray armor that doesn't look like cloth. 
So it, it might be cloth, but it's cloth over some kind of hard thing. So it's either the hard thing is on top or it's cloth over a hard thing that they're wearing on side, on the side with a small American flag on the chest part, gray war helmets, and just some kind of unfamiliar blocky armor that was part of their uniform, mirrored sunglasses, and a very cold attitude. And there was also, as I said, the presence of weapons. Guns will be everywhere. That's what I was seeing in this dream. I was walking. I don't know if the bus system was working. The train system was walking, but the Lord just working. The Lord just had me walking. The military had their guns out everywhere. When they say bristling with weapons, that's what it was like. I saw many roadblocks. The roadblocks will be quite frustrating, especially if you're driving roadblocks everywhere. You just go a couple blocks. There's another roadblock. Where are you going? Where are you coming from? That kind of thing. I saw armored vehicles, tanks. I saw, uh, there were multiple sirens going off. So I don't know if this is because of maybe a fire alarm or police cars driving by, but there was just sirens going off. You know, that kind of scene, like after there's been an explosion in the movies, how they'll just have the siren going off and the smoke and the person is all confused and everything like that. Lots of stuff going on and definitely public announcement systems going all the time. This is not a test. Please refrain from being in the streets if you don't have to. I didn't see them stopping people because I was in the streets. There was a lot of people in the streets. So I was outside. It wasn't lockdown, lockdown where you can't come outside like during COVID. And it was so nerve wracking. I'm telling you now, it was so nerve wracking. It was rough to be suddenly caught up in a system like that. And I was walking around because I don't have a car and I don't know if the metro system was working or not, but I was just walking through the streets. And what was happening is that as I was walking through the streets, I saw a ton of dazed people. People were so dazed. People didn't know if it was Tuesday or January the 4th. People were, they had nowhere to start, nowhere to begin. And this is because People in this country are so coddled. People in America actually think that bad luck, having your, your way of life upended, being attacked, these are all things that in the American psyche happen to other people. So we sit here and we watch and life happens to Syria, life happens to Cuba, life happens to everybody else. But here there's this pervasive belief that life cannot be touched. And yet beneath that, there's a tiny contingent of people who know this is usually older people. Older people have put their life experience to use and older people, at least the ones who write me, they always tell me, Celestial, I'm, I'm sad to hear what you're saying, but I'm not surprised because I'm 60 this year is old. I'm 70 this year is old. And I knew that the penny has to drop sometime. And so older people, that class has sense. That class knows that you can't just go around the world bombing people for your entire career and then get to die in bed. This nation, the United States of America, is not going to die in bed. So as much as people want to think that she will come to her old age and then she will die in bed, America will die in bloody battle and bombs and repayment for every single evil that she has done. And the closer a person is to understanding and accepting that reality and beginning to craft for themselves a new personality, a new selfhood under that realization, the happier actually that person will be because the happiest people on earth are people who walk and operate and live in the light of truth and not in the darkness of befuddlement and deception and God would never say that. These are the people I was seeing in the street. God wasn't showing me the people like myself who made peace in 2012, 2013, 2015 with what God was saying. And then since then, it's simply been putting on additional layers of whatever preparedness that my soul can work on. No, the people I was seeing in the dream were dazed. They were shell-shocked. They were terrified. They could not process what was going on. And yet at the same time, I had the feeling that what had happened was recent. 
it had recently happened. I was seeing people just in the aftermath of this thing, but I wasn't seeing them like the day of. So I wasn't seeing them the day that we will all be surprised when we're watching the TV and then that yellow line, we all know the infamous yellow line. The yellow line is breaking news. Breaking news, so-and-so has died. Breaking news, so-and-so has bombed so-and-so place. Casualties are this many. Breaking news, an earthquake has just broken this country in half. It wasn't that day, and it wasn't the day after, and it wasn't even the week of. I felt like maybe this thing was maybe two weeks to even a month or a little longer on, but people could not absorb what had happened. They were not coping well at all. Many breakdowns and just people wandering, and you can see on their face what is happening, what is happening. So imagine something is a month in, six weeks in, and you're still outside with that face that what is happening face. What do you think is happening? What is TV telling you is happening? What do the guns tell you is happening? The tank is outside the Walmart. The guy with the bullhorn, keep it moving. One glass of milk each or whatever. What, what are your senses and reality telling you is happening? And what is happening with you that you will not be able, whoever these people are, and there's millions of them to absorb what is taking place? And so I saw them and this one question kept coming out of my mouth and I found it so curious, but when I woke up, God was just making it um, clearer to me. I saw people wandering around, they were just staring at everything and they were trying to get it and they weren't getting it. But I, having got it, was asking them this curious question, how exposed were you? How exposed were you? So I'm not talking about exposed to radiation. I said, what did they get on you? What did they get on you? What Before this happened, what did these people get on you? Why did you expose yourself? And to what extent did you expose yourself? Didn't you know that these people would find out everything about you? So I was asking basically Americans, how exposed were you online? What was your exposure like online? Did you have your whole family history online? Did you go and post your ancestry.com 23 and me? I'm half Irish and partly frog results online? Did you have your house address online? What did you have online? How exposed were you before this happened? I was asking the women, why did you expose yourself? Why were you posting yourself in a bikini everywhere? Don't you know that it's men who monitor the internet, monitor the internet all day long? Don't you know that it takes them only 5.5 seconds to reverse search your image and then from there, find your house, your job, and your personal location. Why do you have all this information online? Why are you posting pictures of your new house? Why are you posting so many pictures of your children? Why is everything about you just online there for the government to take and use against you? So I'm asking these questions and nobody was in a state to answer me. Nobody could really answer me because people just were not generally in a state to talk. So after trying to get information out of them and failing, I would just leave the one I was talking to and keep going on my journey until I met another person. And I was very frustrated in this dream, not so much because of what had happened, but because most of the people I met were in such a hopeless state, sad, hopeless, depressed, crying, stressed out, male and female. They could barely express themselves. You stop and talk to a person and they're just like, what's going on? Do you have any idea why they're doing this? And you're basically looking at the aftermath of a country that has not prepared for something that is surely coming to them. If you've been coming to this channel, you know why this is coming. This is coming because God says that an unrighteous people must be left in the hands of their own unrighteous government so that unrighteous and unrighteous can fight it out in the unrighteous battle of the unrighteous. That is why it is coming. It is also coming for higher reasons that I will discuss in the second prophecy, but you can hear about it here. The higher reason that this will happen is that because America must be led into the beast system. If America will not be led into the beast system, then the people that have already made commitments on the side, beast system coming up, yes, we've signed up. We'll be there, count on us. We're coming and we're bringing our country with us. The Europeans have already been in the system, as you will hear in the second prophecy. The Lord just knows everything and the way he puts that knowledge together, it never fails to surprise me. 
These system elements are already at work in many, many other places around the world, but here it has been solidly organic US. And now the B system architects in the United States are frustrated because they are late, late for a very important date. They have to get to Revelation 13. They're late for Revelation 13. They're late to also throw in their chips, throw in their cap to Satan, who is going to empower his beast, who will rise from the sea of people. All that stuff is behind because of the resistance and recalcitrance of the United States. This love for freedom and the flag and a barbecue and a beer and the this amendment and that amendment and the guns, it has got to stop. And the reason that God is not going to stop it is because last time I checked, Revelation 13 is in the Bible. That means that it has to be fulfilled. It's not going to stop because the people who don't want to participate in Revelation 13, all nations are going to participate in Revelation 13. Everybody's going to do roll call. It's just that America's roll call is going to have to be hard impacted because she can't be tricked. She can't be tricked into the money system. She can't be tricked into giving up her weapons like Canada and Australia have done. She can't be tricked into a lot of things. It's not that the people are so astute. It is actually that the people are so stubborn and so dead set on their rights. This nation is built off of the love of rights. Who can have rights and who cannot have rights and who can never take away certain rights. And because of that, nothing but a hard reset, nothing but a hard impact will work to bring about Revelation 13 here. And so people were broken. People were hopeless. People had no context. People had no, no sense of how to respond and because of that, obviously they weren't going to talk to me about what steps they could have taken in the past and what could they have done better to protect their online identity and things like that. All they wanted to know from me is why is America like this? Why has America gone under this obvious military lock lockdown? And why has it happened in such an obvious, scary way? When this thing that I'm talking about happens, it's never going to creep up on us of a soft midnight when this thing I'm talking about happens, it's literally going to happen in our faces. There is no way to hide that you're going to put tanks in the street. And in the past, in one of these live prophecies, I think, I was talking about how America is going to end up looking just like uh, France did. There was a time when France went through this exact situation that I'm talking about. And the UK too, there was a time when bombs kept going off in that place. Bombs kept going off in that place. And then the French were told, listen, for safety's sake, because we don't know where the next bomb is going to go off, but let us put some soldiers on the street and let us put some military here and let's have some tanks and let's have some guns and let's have some this. And for a brief moment, because of what? Because of fear, the French people agreed to that. The French people said, yes, yes, of course, put them there. But then after a while, being French and also being extremely married to their rights, they began to protest against the government and say, listen, when are these soldiers going back? Because the soldiers belong in the barracks. The soldiers don't belong on the streets of Paris and um, all the other places. This is actually government overreach. You're overstaying your welcome. The constitution says this, and you're not allowed to do that. And they began to protest and they began to push back. And eventually the president had to cave quite reluctantly, it seemed. And he pulled the military off the streets. So... America is going to end up just like that. I said that a few years ago, that America, you're going to go through your France period as well. The government was not talking to us as it should have been, meaning that nobody was appearing behind that blue background to say, my fellow Americans, the reason that the guys are out there is because of A and B and C. They were not being overly communicative. And because this was a dream, I just wrote it down. But then this exact thing appears in the message the Lord gave me on February the 24th, which was yesterday. They were not talking to us as usual. They were not making any effort to be transparent about what was happening. And so all we had to go on was what we could see. We could see the increased military presence. We could see the heavy police presence. We could definitely see all the different types of guns on the street. We could see the dogs. Dogs will be freely used in this time period. We could see the dogs everywhere. 
We heard the bullhorn and the public service announcement regularly. We were seeing the soldiers at all the checkpoints, and so it was impossible to miss. But people could not discuss this. And this is the disconnect that many will face going into the future. People who are sitting here, people who are listening, whether you know it or not, you will be shocked to find that you will have something like a pillow in your heart at the time it happens. I'm not saying that you will not feel the initial fear. I'm not saying that you will not feel the initial shock. Just because God has told you doesn't mean that you are cut off from realizing the reality of a thing when it happens. What you will have is the buffer of knowledge that comes with accepting and understanding where we are and where the Holy Spirit says we are going. You will not need to be dragged kicking and screaming into the beast system. So that means that your chances of getting shot on the street for getting into a pointless argument with a soldier are next to nothing. Like you have a 100% life expectancy rate in an altercation with a soldier because you already sat here um, and heard not to altercate with soldiers. Somebody else, Mr. Gun Polisher or Mr. Liberal Arts Professor, even though that's highly unlikely that such a person would do that, but somebody else who is being taken by surprise. So somebody else who's been drinking all the Kool-Aid on CNN and Fox News and World News America, somebody else is right there at the bottom of the totem pole in being able to process this without being stressed, without being depressed, without being extremely angry, without being extremely filled with rage. When a person is filled with rage, crisis, crisis response goes right, right down. It plummets sound responses, right choices, right out the window, because that's what anger does. That's what fear does. That's what stress does. It ruins your crisis response. And so these are some of the shields that God is giving his people. This is why the Bible will say things like, I think it's, hmm, I think it's in Isaiah somewhere where it says, enter into your rooms, my people, and hide yourselves. When you hear God saying something like, enter into your room, hide yourself, what he's telling you is that something is coming. He's not lying to you. He's not telling you that you're going to be carried away in the rapture. He's not telling you, oh no, nothing will ever happen to you. He's not telling you, oh no, I love you too much to hurt you. He's saying, no, things are about to be released. Those things are going to be very hard. They're going to be very deadly. And my best location for you is to be in your room, which is a safe location, a place of hiding. So many people think that the safe place that God is going to put them away from the things I'm talking about is in the rapture. God isn't putting anybody in any rapture. I'm talking about real life things that are unfolding that have only taken four years to unfold. I've been talking about this new America since 2019. A dream of a new America. I think that's the name, the name of one of the prophecies. It's actually called a vision of America. And I was saying the same thing. I was saying that these cops are coming who are going to beat you until your bone doesn't bend this way, it bends the other way. You meet up with those men. You take yourself and talk about this, this matters and that matters and I'm going to protest and I'm going to stand up. Those people are not chatty. Those men, those cops in the black, the new military cops that will come, not the blue cap wearing, no. Those men will beat you until your bone is in a new formation and nobody will sue them. You will get zero compensation. You will not go after their bond. None of the things that you are learning on Facebook and TikTok are going to work. Those men will not be going to jail. It will just you either go to the hospital or the morgue because they will have full license of the government to beat, to scatter, to break all the amendments, to break the whole constitution if necessary, and nothing is going to happen to them. No rapture is coming to interrupt that trajectory. So if you're not able to absorb what's coming, see the difficulty that you'll be in. And so uh, the government was quiet. We were seeing obvious signs. And because people were not able to process, people were not even able to talk or think. Many times as I was asking them my questions, I was just forced to abandon the exercise. And I left them and I would just keep going until I met the next one. What were you doing online before this? How exposed were you? Why did you have all your information out there? Why were you so careless? 
And now here are the things that the Lord ad added when I woke up and I was now putting the dream down on paper. So the government will be very intimidating in America. This nation is going into military lockdown in the future. It has already been planned and it's going to happen. The USA will become a full war government. Now, um, I guess that means what it says. Every government is different in times of war than in times of peace. In times of peace, all the, all the civil rights for sure are in full operation. The judicial system is the normal one and things like that. But in war, many emergency provisions are either written for the first time or the old ones that worked in the last war are invoked. And so God was telling me that America will become a full war government America is going to have a military government that has unlimited power to use emergency law. That is martial law. The government that we're going to have in the future will have unlimited power to use emergency law, martial law, due to the circumstances that we will be living under. And so the circumstances will inform how the government behaves and the type of legal system that we're operating on. God says that America will definitely experience wartime conditions and the peculiar type of government that goes along with it. He also said that we will have military tribunals here, and that is what normal citizens will go to. Military tribunals are strictly for the military. So the army have theirs, and I guess the air force have theirs, and the navy have theirs, and all of them have their soldier jail. I don't think soldiers go to real jail. I think they go to soldier jail, and I think soldiers... Uh, have trials at military tribunals. But God says that normal citizens are going to go to military tribunals as well. The judiciary will be completely suspended at that time. We will not have normal system of checks and balances in the laws. And the legal system will be military and not civilian. We will also have checkpoints. We will have curfews. We will have roadblocks. We will have quarantines. We will have unlawful search and seizure. We will have unlawful detention. We will have indefinite detention. We will have trial without representation. We will have a sharp curta curtailment of all human rights all around by using the circumstances prevailing at that time as a reason to shift the country in a new direction. So checkpoints, you're moving to, from point A to point B. You will either be stopped and asked for a reason, or as I have described here in the past, I think the prophecy is called Nazis and something. It's a prophecy from 2020 or 2021. I think it's 2020. America is going to be divided. So I've been bringing that word since 2021, that America is going to be divided by checkpoints. America is also going to be divided by borders. Right now we just have state lines. You just get to the state line and I guess you just crossed or whatever. America is going to be divided as in Minnesota will be one little country that's different from Vermont, which is different from New Jersey, which is different from Pennsylvania, which is different from Virginia. It's literally going to be like little countries inside the continent locked up. And I explained in one video that what I saw is when this new world government comes in, it's going to be America has a big outside border keeping her, let's say, from Mexico, from Canada, from everywhere else, an outside border. But then between two states, the two states might say, I don't want to be, I don't want to have free passage. So the two states will then borderize themselves inside, which means that you could have New Jersey and New York right next to each other. And due to state choice, this is inside the B system. Now when the B system actually happens due to the choices of the state, we're inside the bigger border. And then inside the bigger border, these two states decide to border up as well. And you will now need papers. You will now need special identification papers to cross from the two as if you're crossing between two separate countries. But at the time that the government does this, they will just be using checkpoints to do that division. And they did that in COVID um, because New York was so filled with COVID. I think that um, other states were stopping people with New York licenses from going in. They were being turned back. And so curfews is giving a special time to go to bed. And this will probably be uh, 
a blanket time where you have to be in the house, you have to be in the house by a certain time, and they might only make exceptions for maybe emergency services, exceptions for doctors and things like that, exceptions for the police and the firefighters, anything that is not an emergency, you will have to be at home at a certain time. And the way curfews work is you also can't come out of the house until a certain time in the morning. Roadblocks, pretty close to checkpoints, except a roadblock is, it doesn't necessarily need to be at a border point. A roadblock can be set up anywhere. So this is something happens, you want to flee your area. They set up a roadblock and then they'll be telling you, turn back, turn back, go back to your home, stay back to your home. You can also use a roadblock to do exactly what I'm going to say next. You can use a roadblock to quarantine. You can set up roadblocks at all the entrances to, for instance, a very big apartment complex, or you can use it to set up um, roadblocks to lock off an entire subdivision. And then all the people in that subdivision will have to stay there. They won't be able to drive out. There'll be no way to get out, you know? And then the next thing he said, we will see is quarantines. This is definitely related to diseases. And in wartime, please understand that your rights are suspended. And the reason they're suspended is for national security and also the smaller national security, which is called, uh, socially, it's called for the greater good, for the greater good. So they'll say that there's an outbreak of this disease. You look a bit fluey, your temperature is wrong. And you could say, no, but I was running to catch the train and that's why I'm warm. And they'll say, well, we don't believe you. You look like you're coming down with this brand new thing that we just invented or discovered and they quarantine you, they lock you up. Unlawful search and seizure. The government will have power to make up a crime, accuse you of the crime, and then come and search you and then plant evidence on you if they're really good and if you're not watching out. And then they will say, aha, we've searched you without a warrant. And then we've seized this thing that we actually brought in our own backpack. And that is definitely by now, you are just basically getting the picture that dangerous times are coming and dangerous times are best lived through by wise people who are very prayerful, wise people who are listening with all their heart, wise people who understand that the spirit of fear is not given unto the children of God. And therefore those wise people need to do deep dives into the Lord's presence. No one is getting through the end times without God's presence. I don't care what religion you are at the time that you are watching or not watching this video. Not a single soul is getting through the book of Revelation until that soul has bowed its knee and confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and has repented of all their sins, has bowed their neck and humbled themselves in submission to Christ Jesus. If you have any other formula, I'm pleased to inform you, you are not getting through the end times. No one is getting through this gate of testing unless Jesus Christ is their escort, their guide, and the one who is taking them through it to whatever ending he has for them. There's going to be unlawful detention. They will pick you up and just be able to keep a person without cause. You don't have to read them their rights and you don't have to give them a reason. You can simply say that we have suspicion. And then you say suspicion of what? And they'll be like, we're suspicious of what we're suspicious about. And that's on a need to know basis, mister. And then they just keep you there for six months. Your family's looking for you. And that leads us to the next one, indefinite detention. They might keep you for six months and you're lucky to come out, or they just might keep you forever, like the people who die in Guantanamo Bay. They will keep a person for trial without representation. This is you go to court and there's nobody standing there fighting for you. The judge will just ask you some questions. And if you're not able to answer satisfactorily or it's kangaroo court, basically. It's not a re real legal system. They just railroad you so they can punish you. And God is just saying that they will sharply limit to curtail all human rights by using the circumstances at that time. Please see the wisdom, see the crafty evil, evil wisdom. So you do all this and then you say, we're doing it because of the circumstances, but then you're the one who caused the circumstances. You're the one who took the vehicle and smashed it into the wall, created the circumstances, and then said, we have to change things now because look at what happened. And so they will use the circumstances prevailing at that time as a reason to shift the country in a new direction. If you have never seen the old footage of now passed on senior George Bush saying, we have at this time an opportunity to create for ourselves a new world order, that ourselves is them, 
the shadow government that I've been speaking about here for years, that ourselves is definitely not the collective. It's definitely not everybody. It's a certain group of people. And this new direction is to meet up with scripture. We are heading to meet up with scripture. There is a beast that has to rule a beast system. And no nation is going to be spared from that beast system. The Lord also says that there will be a heavy divide and rule policy. That means that the government is going to definitely weaponize the new laws that it will be making up at the drop of the hat. And what God says is that they will make the rules and they will implement them very aggressively. So they will be very protective of their on the spur of the moment new rules that they make. But he says that they will also use those same rules to make individuals turn on one another. Divide and rule means using one person against another by offering incentives to people in exchange for certain acts or information. Whoever wants or needs that incentive will crack first and will do whatever the government wants them to do against one other person or a large mass of people. And examples that came to my mind that I've covered in other videos are this thing that they've been floating for a long time, the universal basic income, saying that, well, you know, life is very unfair. Some people earn so much money and some people earn so little money. And as a result, we're experiencing food insecurity at the bottom and we're experiencing housing insecurity and we're experiencing all the insecurities. And therefore, there should be a baseline set that everybody earns this money. Now, what happens is for the people at the bottom, it is in a way useful. It's helpful because at least it ensures that the basic income that is set helps them to always be able to have food, helps them to always to be able to have, have housing and things like that. But what they don't mention is that it will curb top earners and bring them also to that baseline. And so we are going into an America where you, the hard worker, will be told that you're making too much money and you will start to come under scrutiny and you will start to come under persecution and rich people are not used to being persecuted they're used to being the persecutors or they're just being used to left to be left alone what they're not used to is being persecuted because of how much they earn and being asked where is this money coming from and are you sure you're not a drug baron and things like that so ubi is an incentive whereby if somebody wants to get that ubi and this is leading into the other prophecy. Lord, you're so wonderful because everything just fits together like a jigsaw puzzle if a person takes time to pay attention. If a person wants the UBI and if enough people want the UBI and too few people, because there's always less rich people and well-off people than median income and struggling people. If the larger block wants UBI, UBI is going to come. And they're just going to cut off the free market economy business. That's all going to go away anyway. Anything, everything in the beast system, especially here in America, is going to be state-owned. The government's going to own all, own all the corporation. The government's going to own all the gas stations, all the railways. Nothing's going to be private. The state is going to own it all because only the state has the wisdom to manage resources, to manage funds, to manage all the banks. Everything is just going to be the central hub of the US government and who doesn't like it will just have to go to a camp and rethink their life choices. And so one example of divide and rule is UBI. UBI is definitely going to split all societies where that comes. People who want to be free to work and earn, they're not gonna be able to do that. And those who don't want to be free, those who just want to be taken care of and say, no, all my life I've had to fight. And now this sounds like a good deal. It's going to split the society. Another thing that's going to split the society is the, so, the so, social credit score system. Social credit score is going to be one of the worst things that will ever be introduced into society because they'll be ranking you on how well people like you, which will automatically trigger people to be fake because now you have to, you can't just be yourself. You have to work hard and make sure that people like you because if people don't like you, they will have the right to to impact your score in some way. I don't know how another person can impact your personal score from the government. Maybe they'll report you. Maybe they'll say, I had an interaction with her at the bank and I didn't like her. And then that will go into AI and then AI will add up all your scores and start giving you a 3.1 
when what you need to have a decent life is maybe a five or seven and things like that. And so the social social credit courses score system, I've covered it in many old videos. And the last thing that the Lord said to me is a new America is coming. This is the word of the Lord. A new America is coming. This is the word of the Lord. And so you've heard here many things such as that America will be highly militarized. And I don't think that any prophecies really capture that as well as the three-part series that is called in quick succession, America in turmoil. But it's been mentioned in quite a few other prophecies. There's one prophecy I never made a video for. That prophecy is simply called tanks. Tanks in America, tanks in America. And basically it was just God showing me that for the first time ever, everything that they use at the Washington DC military parade and all that, we're going to see it dispersed throughout our neighborhoods. And this is the visible arm of the beast system. So you have heard the word of the Lord. The dream is called a dream of the new America. This is February 23rd, 2024. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Thank you for being with me. I hope that your hearts are open. I hope that your hearts are listening. I hope that you are not trying to live this Christian life through uh, physical force. You cannot force Christianity. Christianity has to be organic. Christianity is the living relationship that every soul has with their maker, the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people may be locked in fully locked in. Some people may be partly locked in. A lot of people are playing with their souls. A lot of people think that God is still an option. A lot of people think that the way to handle hearing the true prophetic word of God in the earth is to dismiss it or try to pick it apart. And I think, I think it's necessary to simply continue to warn people that what you choose to do with the time that you have left is your choice, but you can't cry later like so many millions will cry. So you're waiting to MAGA rise and MAGA up and glow up and Democratic National Congress up, and you're waiting for a lot of stuff. And then when things end up in a totally different ballpark, then you will want to start crying. Then you will want to start doing 9-11 stories. And where is God? God is right here. God is speaking to you, but your heart has to be open. And the thing is that the remnant those whose hearts are open, those who are receiving God's words, that they're actually going to be the judgment of the unrighteous. Because imagine two people die and they stand before God and God speaks to one and says, why did you live an immoral life? Why were you doing all these things? Oh God, I couldn't help it. I came from a bad background. I got caught up in a bad crowd and you know, that's why I started doing this. And that's why I started sleeping with women, or that's why I started sleeping with men. And then another person is standing right next to you. And the Lord says, well, tell me your story. And the person is like, well, you know, Lord, I came from a bad background and my parents died and I got caught up in this and that and that. But then I don't know, there was just something about it. There was just something about the way I was treating my body. There was something about the way I was treating other people. There's something about the way I was approaching daily life. And I just couldn't do it. I just felt that there had to be more. I got myself cleaned up. I got into a program. I went back to school. Right there, the testimony of the second person indicts the first person because the testimony of the second person says that you came from the same bottom. You came from the same bad foundation. The word of God says in Isaiah 11, if the foundation is broken, what can the righteous do? And these hopeless pastors will just say a verse like that and leave it. And then the person feels like, yeah, what can I do? What you do is that when a foundation is broken, any builder will tell you that you have to rip up the old foundation and lay a new one. It's as simple as one, two, three. I've been stunned all my life to sit in so many different religious gatherings, to listen to so many so-called podcasts, to sit in different churches. And pastors will bring up this verse and they're so hopeless. It's like putting on a shirt and forgetting to button it and then walking in the street and thinking that you're fully dressed. How do you bring up a verse like that and not teach the people what the answer to the verse is? Who says that because a Bible verse ends in a question, it means that it's a hopeless verse and there is no answer to it? The Lord expects us to be thinkers. The Lord expects us to eat this book and grow strong. If the foundation is broken, what can the righteous do? You have to do the hard work of ripping up the old foundation and laying a new one. So what? So you can continue building the house. 
You get no house until you lay the foundation. If the foundation is broken, you're coming from a background of sexual abuse. You're coming from a background of money mismanagement. You've gone broke and the economic crash is not even here yet. You're caught up in drinking, smoking. You're as high as this young woman that I saw at the bus stop tonight. The people's daughter, I mean, she needed a rope around her leg to tether her to the ground. High at 6 p.m. So high. Just, just a young woman. Various generations. And she's not alone. All the old people are getting high off weed gummies. Discovered weed gummies last year. Imagine that at my grown age. If the foundation is broken, what can the righteous do? The righteous have to do the hard work of getting hammer picks and that drill thing, that jackhammer, and breaking up the foundation totally and then doing the hard work, jumping in there with your little wagon and pulling all the broken bricks out and tossing them and laying a new foundation. You will not be able to tell the master Jesus Christ that the reason you never built a house here on earth is because the foundation was broken. Cause then he will ask you, what should the righteous do? And then I'll be standing right there. Like, I know, Lord, I know. It's inevitable where we're going. So the time between the prophecy, this prophecy, if you're an old subscriber, this prophecy is years old in your ears. And, and to give God, let us give God his due. Let us give God his glory. Because the Holy Spirit has a way, will give me the same prophecy and it never comes the same way twice. If I have not spoken of this new military America 10 times, then I've never spoken of it at all. There are endless witnesses to this prophecy. When I have time to watch it back, then I will put those, put those witnesses. I'll put the links for you. Um, because it takes time to find out where they all are. But this is the time to change. The unwise people, strange people cooked in the head, they're using this time to mock the word of God, which is, which it's, it's, sudden, it's suddenly something to see. It's certainly something to see. They're using this time when the prophecy is moving along from the time it was spoken to fulfillment. They're using this time, they're using the gap to say, you see, Nothing happened. You see, it's a lie. Remember the Bible says that if a prophet says something and it doesn't come to pass, do not be afraid of him. It, that's a false prophet. Imagine. We put our USBs, we put our little memory sticks into the computer and then we say, copy 1000 files. I know I do that often, I copy huge amounts of files and I leave it. And then it will say time loading one hour and nine minutes. What am I going to do in one hour and nine minutes? Sit and stare at my laptop? Of course not. I'm going to move on to do another task. I'm going to cook or I'm going to go for a walk, stretch myself from my workstation. I'm not going to sit there and be staring at it and say, see, see, it hasn't copied the files. That That's insanity. This is shows that there's gaps up there in the gray matter. The time period between the time of prophecy is spoken and the time the prophecy comes to pass is to change. It's to grow. It's to learn how to overcome the fear. It's to learn how to overcome you. We are our own worst enemy. The worst enemy is the person looking at you in the mirror. Second worst enemy is the people in your house who won't listen. And then when you get yourself together and this thing happens, guess what? And I've been saying it here for years. Righteous people, you get yourself together, you do all this work, and then guess how you're going to be repaid? Because this is the thing that is coming in the end times. None of us are going to escape unscathed. You get yourself ready, and then the people in your house are having the meltdown, and you're frustrated, and you're like, great. Now I'm in Celestial's dream. I'm living her dream. She said that all the people were hopeless and depressed and they were screaming and crying and rolling on the floor and throwing their toys. Here I am in a, in a family of three and I've been telling my husband for years and now he's crying and my teenager is crying and I'm the one who's prepared. And they're both in bed with depression. A whole man can't get out of bed. Why? Because he wouldn't listen. Because she wouldn't listen. A whole wife wouldn't listen. And so now she can't play her part in the survival strategy of the future. No, she's, 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 how could this happen? And yet she was writing all over the internet. Like, I think those hateful prophecies are just not of God. And then guess what? That USB that you probably forgot about that I spoke about five minutes ago, 
it just goes, files completed. And then you wake up and tanks are on the street. And then you realize that the gap was the time to rip up the old foundation and lay a new one so that you can be ready when these things come to pass. I'm Celestial, and this is the Master's Voice. God bless you and keep you, and until I see you again, goodbye.